Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I started to put together a little sermon of sorts, kind of like the one I uploaded yesterday, sharing from Lisa. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, please help me to speak without coughing. Right now my lungs feel pretty good, but I'm going to the emergency room at 11 with a caregiver I know. She really cares for me. She's going to take me to the nearest one because I couldn't get in to see the pulmonologist, pulmonologist until the 31st. The coughing is bad. Last night I rebuked Satan. I said, get thee behind me, Satan, and get out of here. And do you know my coughing stopped for a little while and I was praising the Lord. I have a feeling he's behind this in one way or another and I pray it isn't anything too serious. Could be just asthmatic bronchitis. That's what I'm hoping. But people need to sleep more than I'm getting. So I'm going to go see if I could get a prescription for something. I've been on one round of antibiotics already. Okay, anyway, I was saying, I started to put together this little sermon or talk or whatever you want to call it. On this business of once saved, always saved, or eternal security, I once again ran into another channel doing a vlog. He calls them vlogs, number whatever, and this was number nine, so I don't guess he's been doing them long. And everything he said, but this one sentence seemed right. That's how it is. They believe most like the rest of us, but I was looking up in Luke 21 how Jesus said when they asked him, they said, look at the beauty of the temple. Um, he says, not one stone will be left upon another. They wanted to know when these things would be. What does he tell them? Right off the bat. Take heed that you be not deceived. There's way too many people deceived by this false doctrine. And yet they're so adamant. And I am grieved in my spirit. That they stand on Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, which are true. All the scriptures they quote are true. But they don't look at the bigger picture. They don't, I suggested to this one young man, read Ephesians 2, verse 10. We are saved to do good works. How about this one? A man is known by his fruit. By this shall all men know that you are mine, that you love one another. And he made it clear. Loving one another sometimes involves works. It involves works. And if you turn your back on the poor, or the sick, or the naked, those in prison, that list Jesus gave. He will separate you with the goats. Your salvation is <coughs> sorry. It is not eternal. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And for those of us who understand it, for us to not tell you 
to not try to get it across to you we're in the wrong if we just shut up. Stop saying a word. And I hate, I'm tired of talking about it. But once again, I come upon another channel that somebody introduced me to. And they replied to my comment. Oh, it just breaks my heart. You all are going to be left behind. I speak of those of you who not only believe once saved, always saved, to the point of not repenting or trying to do good deeds for others. I don't care how poor you are or rich or influential or not influential. There is something everybody can do. To show your fruit. Yes, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Showing others you are living in peace. It's having patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. No matter what you're going through, you remain faithful. You have gentleness and self-control. I know sometimes some of those are really hard. I'm surprised the word forgiveness is not in there though because Jesus made it a really big deal that that is one of the things we have to do. It's a do word. It's a verb. To forgive. Forgiving. Loving, loving people is a verb. Visiting a sick person in, in a hospital, that is an action. Visiting is a verb. It's a do. You're doing something as if you were doing it for Jesus Christ himself. You either get it or you don't. And if you don't, you need to be taking it to the Lord in prayer. And asking him, Lord, was I deceived? Am I wrong? Or is that camp wrong? There's two camps. Satan has so wisely divided us, has he not? I will never say... Oh, well, let's just agree to disagree and move on. Believe me, I want to move on. Most of my subscribers agree with me or they wouldn't be with me. But although I think there's still some of you that believe once you are saved, once you've prayed that ABC, how simple can you make it? Admit you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead, making him fully man and fully God. And then you confess those sins, all your sins, and you are forgiven, past, present, and future. Okay, people want to take that out of context and say all your future sins are forgiven. And I have a feeling that if you're truly, truly born again, you will live right. You will want to help spread the gospel. That's doing as Jesus commanded in the Great Commission. Go forth and make disciples of all the nations, he said. Was that just for the apostles and his main, I'd say, 120 disciples? Besides apostles. Was that just for them? What about seeking the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Is praying in tongues an action word? Yes. It's something you do. That pleases the Lord. It shows intimacy with Him. 
And for those of you who want it and can't ha haven't received it, you just hang in there and keep praying and fasting. Prove to the Lord you really want it. And I suggest those of you who want to continue arguing for the point of once saved, always saved, that you would delve into your New Testament. There's some in the Old also. But just in the New, that video I put up from Michael Criswell, probably a week ago, I'd say, it's just him talking. I downloaded it and uploaded it because I was having problems talking without coughing. And thank you, Jesus, so far only one little fit. T coughing attack. If we love our brothers and sisters in Christ the way we are supposed to, we should want to help them not be deceived not just those of us here on making the videos if you can absolutely cannot figure out how to make a video with your device and upload it those of us with channels that have several numbers of subscribers we could share your video on our video which would and then tell people about your channel and we could sh send them your way. Every single one of you that refuse to repent because you honestly believe the creator of the universe left his heavenly estate, came down to earth to teach us all those things that we need to do and then let people crucify him on a cross for your sins and mine and you want to trample on the gift of grace that's what you're doing he's provided the grace to have all your sins forgiven past present and future but the future sins you can't just go off sinning oh Gee, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Well, I'm only human. I know my sins are covered. Easy believism. You don't have to worry about much of nothing, do you? You don't have to worry about reading your Bible because after all, that's doing something. You don't have to worry about Helping out your fellow brother and sister in Christ financially, if you're able. Take a poor neighbor a dinner once in a while. Can you swing that? A pot of spaghetti is so cheap. Maybe you can't afford to give money to help somebody, but there's got to be something you can do. There's got to be. And spreading the gospel truthfully without the errors is the most important thing. But how are you going to spread the gospel and save people when you don't even admit it yourself? Oh, you can get people saved. Yeah, just like Billy Graham, a 33rd degree Mason. He got people saved, born again. We really aren't saved until we either die or go to or go in the rapture. And then we get our salvation. You see, you've got it locked down like okay, I said that little prayer. I even got water baptized. I know I'm saved. Praise the Lord. I'm good to go. I got my ticket to heaven. And then you grieve the Holy Spirit. By refusing to do anything. Oh, you will if you want to. But if you truly love the Lord, you will, won't you? And you can say, well, I do it because I love the Lord, not because I have to. Well, if you don't have to, 
and you do it because you love the Lord, then aren't you really doing it anyway? And you're just saying that we don't have to do anything? Do you get my point? You may be already obeying him and be you may be committed and you're doing the things he taught us, but yet your mouth is saying, for it is by grace that we're saved through faith and that not of ourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's true. But Ephesians 2.10 says that we are saved to do good works. Read your version of it. Take it to the Lord. You must have fruit or you'll be cut down. You'll be cut right off the branch and thrown into the lake of fire. You must have deeds. You must show that you mean what you say. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm begging you. Put your pride down. You're living in a, a bubble of false teaching. And I'm begging you to break that bubble. Read the Bible for yourself with the help of the Holy Spirit. Y'all, I hate to ask, but if anybody who didn't get a chance to give to Marilla, if you could possibly help me out for a little bit. I've given, I've, I wasn't able to give her much, but all of the money I had put up for movers and moving to hopefully my new apartment because they're not making her get rid of her dog. I don't know what they've told her, my neighbor. So it's like some days she will and other days she won't. And this is what I was afraid of. I think the Lord has this room reserved for me. But they're dragging their feet on it. I know it's because they have to put down a new flooring and everything they do costs money. But leaving that room sit empty is losing them money. I've spent all I, I had on medicine is what I'm just getting around to. Besides prescriptions, over-the-counter cough medicine and breathe easy tea and other things and now before I spend the last of what I have I'm going to the emergency room because 9 20 a.m. hmm it blacked out and gave me 9 20 and then there was a bride looking out the window I'll look it up Oh my God, my God, my God, 20, 9.20, I hear there's a chance we could be going home tomorrow, 24th or 25th. I started to share that lady's dream and I said, it's just, they're going to say it's date setting. This lady had a dream and I don't remember the details except that she said, she came running out of that building saying, 24th or 25th, 24th or 25th, 24th or 25th, probably depending on what part of the world you live in. That's how I took it. But we don't know if it's this month. And she didn't get, say a year. A year or a month. Just the 24th or the 25th. Anyway, this says, Bariona, proper masculine noun. It means Barjona, son of Jonah, the surname of the Apostle Peter. 
I want to know what it means. All, all their names have meanings. Son of Jonah. Let me keep going and see what I can find. But it's referring to Peter. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ told me himself that once saved, always saved, was a lie from the pit of hell. Of course, someone said, well, are you sure you were hearing from God because you've been wrong before? Yeah, I was. I got that message on the rapture. Again, I was given July 17th, not a year. For all we know, we're going home this year, July 17th. I'm not going to say it was God. I'm not going to say it wasn't God. I'm just going to say, well, it sure wasn't right for 2019, was it? And before that, I got deceived by a lying spirit telling me my sister. I needed you to tell my sister. <laughs> I needed to tell her to, to not let her children go to Mexico because they would be killed by ISIS. That was a straight up lie from the devil. I should have known better. My confirmation was solid. But the Lord taught me a lesson in it. And it never got put up on YouTube because it was personal for my sister and her children. And the Lord allowed it to happen to teach me. I had to start doing spiritual warfare. Are you all doing it? I hope so. Anyway, I'll put my PayPal link in the description box. If anybody could help me recover... The money that was taken out of my account. I didn't tell you that. I told you that if you take a survey and they tell you you get a product worth over such and such amount of money just for taking our survey. Oh, you get the product all right for the cost of shipping and handling. But if you don't read the fine print, apparently... And, and return it within so many days. You get charged for it. I was charged eighty nine ninety five for a bottle of CBD oil. And ninety three for some kind of sleep aid that had CBD oil in it. But I didn't even order. Didn't even want. But I didn't read the pages clearly. I just clicked next. Next. Because I didn't want them. I only wanted the CBD oil with for four dollars and ninety one cents shipping and handling. Don't take those surveys. I mean, maybe you can, and you'll know to unclick. What you had to do was unclick it. It was clicked for you, and all I had to do was unclick it. And read the fine print that if you don't return this product in so many days, your account, whatever card you put down there, you put 16 digits to my debit card, and they charged me nearly $200 out of my account. I just straight up Satan coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He's trying to keep me from moving. Where I can keep my sanity. I'm on way too much Benadryl, y'all. But I figure it's safe and it'll help keep the gunk down, you know. Plus, I'm on Mucinex, Robitussin DM, my breathing treatments. I have an inhaler. 
And praise the Lord, I've been able to talk this long with only two little coughing spells. That's amazing. But only if you feel led, if you feel led to help, if you have a PayPal account. All that money I had saved was going to finish paying off my back rent that I started trying to pay off in 2018, January of 2018. I paid this place $50 in January, 50 in February, 50 in March. And the very first month, I paid the 50. The next month, which is February now, $500 60-day late charge came on there. I go to Billy and I say, what's this for? And they haven't credited me my $50. She said, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. This is billing now. They're supposed to know this. Corporate claimed I never paid my security deposit. Well, I most certainly did and have proof of it. I paid it when I had my tour before I moved in. But they took it off my rent as that 500 was holding the room to show I was secure, seriously wanting it. So I would move into it. Well, then the next month is March. Now I've paid two $50 amounts. I still don't have any credit to my account. And the amount dropped to 475 I said, well, what is this amount? It's down to 475 And they're not taking the $50 off my rent. She said, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'll look into it. She comes back telling me it's my pet deposit. I said, no, ma'am. I paid that the month I moved in. Because they took the 500 off my rent. I was. That's how they worked with me. They do it for all kind of people. Anyway, I don't want to get into all that. I just wanted you to understand. I tried to start paying. I would have had it paid off by now. and wouldn't even be an issue. If they had not done that to me. The third month. I paid $50. And there was another $500 charge on there. Not $475. Now it's $500 again. Still no credit for the money I'm paying. There's something wrong. And I'm praying about consulting a personal injury attorney. And I would like your opinion on it. I, I, I may not follow it, but I'd like your opinion. They refused to do anything about the dog stuff. They may have written her a letter or something, but... She may be too senile to remember to always put the dog up. Maybe some days she just don't want to. She wants to hurry up and get down there half hour before the lunchroom even opens to socialize. And I don't want to have hard feelings. My war is not against flesh and blood. Our war is against Satan, his power, the powers and principalities, and the high places and in the heavenlies. The devil and his minions, demons, can use a dog. Can use a, man, a lady who don't even belong on this floor anymore. She should be in assisted living, if not skilled nursing. Probably assisted living. And I have texts and emails to back up my case. I know what the Bible says about suing people. You're supposed to try to work it out instead of going to court. Must the judge find you guilty and throw you into prison? 
That's what it says. It no, nowhere says don't ever sue anybody. Nowhere does it say that. I just don't want to if I can afford help it. Okay, uh, this is 30 minutes. I need to go. I need to rest until it's time to go. All right. I thank each and every one of you for your prayers. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and your devices, and over each and every one of you, and your internet connections as well, and over my computer, so we can stay connected. And I don't know if there's a chance they'll admit me. But if so, I won't be making a video for a while. Of any kind. Unless I can figure out how to do it with the phone. I realize that if all you have is a cell phone and you don't have a laptop, you may not be technically savvy enough to make your own channel or maybe if you feel like God hasn't called me to have a channel then you're supposed to do something else pray about it and ask the Lord what is my purpose for these end times how am I supposed to help make disciples of all the nations Look at my situation, Lord. What am I supposed to do? He'll give you an idea if you mean it. If I'll say bye for now, y'all. I'll try to talk to you later. I'm hoping they'll just give me prescriptions and send me home. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.